So that's sentencing that has been described by some as a slap on the wrist and a five-year-long wait for the families of the victims of the Moy Girls fire, which killed 10 Form 1 girls, has led to or has ended with a five-year sentence. Today, High Court Judge Stella Motoko sentenced the defendant for 10 counts of manslaughter. While it has brought the families of the victims some form of closure, they expected a more punitive punishment given the grave loss and grief they have suffered. Gina Kirori has more on this precedent-setting sentence. Members of the tragic Moy Girls School fire died out a long time ago, but the resolution of the parents of the victims has burned strongly since September 1, 2017, after they lost 10 of their kin to the fire that was found out to be an act of arson. On December 16, 2021, the families breathed a sigh of relief when High Court Judge Stella Motoko found the defendant guilty of 10 counts of manslaughter. Today, the defendant was handed her sentence. Due to the sensitivity of the case, we were only allowed to take the judge's audio to ensure no images of the defendant were taken. I was sentenced the subject TWG to, impris to imprisonment for a period of five years in each of the 10 counts of murder she's, sorry, manslaughter she's facing. The period of imprisonment of five years shall be served concurrently. The accused will serve her time at Langata Women's Prison, a decision the judge says she is open to appeal. The sentencing has, however, been postponed two times pending a probation report from officers. In the report, the officers recommended both a custodial sentence, meaning that she would serve prison time, and a non-custodial sentence, meaning an alternative to prison, such as community service. Emotion poured out outside the courtroom for both the families of the victims and the defendant, who was embraced tightly by her parents, but the victims' families have varying reactions. I'm still processing the sentencing of five years to learn concurrently for the ten counts. I would have thought it would be more stiffer. But anyway, nothing will ever bring my bubbles back to me, whether she stays in jail forever or not. It's just a hope that with the current spate of fires in every school, every right center, maybe her sentencing will serve us her talent to other students. It's good. She's uh, sentenced and she's uh, going to serve a sentence, although very lenient. Somebody created that death. And in fact, if it was a death that I could see, the body of my grandchild was better. But I saw a stamp. The girl was my darling. It was my first grandchild. Five years. We were to attend the lecture. Asha Soma. Justice Stella Motoko clarified that the court had been faced with the dilemma of whether to charge the suspect as a minor, since she was charged when she was 14 years old, or whether to charge her as an adult, which is when she was found guilty at 18 years. I find a solution in Section 191-1L of the Children Act. Following the Court of Appeal decisions I've cited, especially in JKK versus Republic, it is my view that due to the gravity of the offense in this case, at the current age of the subject, she cannot be released back to society without being brought to terms with the consequences of her actions. Quite the precedent for arson cases, particularly in schools, with the judge admitting that this has been amongst the most difficult cases she has ever had to decide over. Gena Kirori, NTV.